Hey guys, Jason. Hey everybody, Jason Creel, and you're watching the Lawn Care Life. Today I want to talk to you about how to start a lawn business in a competitive market. Stay tuned. You know, people all the time talk about how many lawn businesses there are and how many there keep being over and over, more and more and more lawn care businesses. Is it overcrowded industry? Can I make it in such a, a difficult environment? And I, and I can't, you know, I haven't surveyed the lawns. I haven't, you know, traveled across the United States looking at lawn care businesses or gone to Australia to check out the environment over there or all the other places where a lawn business is a viable business option. But I know what it's like in my area and it's competitive. I live in Alabama. There's plenty of lawn business out there, but I do understand from what I hear and gauge from people on YouTube is that in, in some other parts of the country, it's even more competitive. It's particular if you go to parts of Texas or Florida and it, it's just very, very competitive. Meaning that there's just lawn care trucks and trailers everywhere cutting grass. And so you think, you know, is this thing overcrowded? How do I do this? And here's the way I look at it, okay? And I may have touched on some of this before, but I wanna emphasize it because you know, I, I think some people just get this defeated mentality. I can't never succeed in that environment. And I look at it like this. I, I say one, all competition, and this is very important in my opinion, all competition is not true competition, okay? What I mean by that? I mean by that, it, what I mean is that a lot of the people out there mowing lawns or doing whatever they're doing, I mean, they're, they're doing it on the side, they're weekend warriors, or they're just not very good at it, to be honest with you. Now, a lot of people are good at the actual mowing grass, but I can't tell you how many customers want to stick with somebody if you're just reliable and do a pretty good job. Why? Because the, fa the past five lawn care businesses they've had were not reliable and didn't do a good job. Or maybe they did a good job, but they weren't reliable. I mean, because what happens? The established lawn care businesses get too many customers coming in and they can't get to them all and they start neglecting the, the lesser ones and spending more time on on these they're unable to really manage their business well manage their schedule so there's always dissatisfied customers everywhere i mean they're just all over the place so so what i'm saying is i i, I really don't care if there's a hundred lawn care businesses in my area what i know is that if you market it properly you can get customers and that if you are dependable and do a good job, you are going to stand out from the vast majority of them. It doesn't mean there's not a lot of them that aren't dependable and do a good job, but I'm telling you a great percentage of them don't. I think it might be worth looking into how can I differentiate myself in an industry where you say, well, everybody's got a truck and a trailer and a mower and they're cutting grass, you know, and it's all the same price and I can't, how, how can I look any different than my competition? Well, you know, we talk about that sometimes, you, you know, your, your business image, your, your logo, your appearance, your truck, you know, how you carry yourself. And I understand you're on a budget, but do the best you can on a particular budget to at least look professional to make that good impression. Because a lot of customers, higher end customers, just don't want to pay a higher price if, if the appearance is not there. But I think, you know, if you're starting out and you've got time, okay, you can do things like when you get a new customer on that first time you cut their lawn, you could even write a little hand uh, written note on a postcard with your business logo on. I have those in my truck, or I used to. I don't know if they're still there or not. I, obviously, I don't use them that much. But, you know, if you had plenty of time, you could write a little note on there, stick it on the door and just say, hey, you know, we're, we're very grateful for the opportunity to take care of your lawn. Please let us know if there's ever anything wrong or we need to, um, anything that needs our attention, something like that. That personal touch, you know, and you say, well, I'm not, I just want to cut the grass. I don't want a relationship with them. We're not, you know, we're not looking to have the customers over for dinner necessarily. But if you can make some sort of connection where it seems like they care, because like I said, a lot of these customers are coming from an experience where they had a, a lawn care provider who obviously didn't care. And so if, if you can redeem that in their mind, then a lot of times they'll be loyal to you for life. And what I've found, a lot of times, you might have to do those first two or three services uh, to, to kinda, because they're weary, they've had a bad experience in the past. But after you show up on time and do a good job, after that, 
I mean, they 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 love you. They they won't want to leave you forever because of, you know I'm not talking about everybody, but a lot of customers will be very loyal to you if they've had a bad experience in the past. So set yourself apart the best you can. Uh, maybe send them a little a text message or something, you know, something personal to let them know. I used to send a little five dollar gift card to some of them occasionally and just say, yeah, I really appreciate your business. You know, enjoy a free coffee on us or whatever. And then the last point I want to give is sometimes in a crowded industry, you have to think, well, what else can I do to diversify myself? If there truly is a lawnmower on every corner uh, cutting grass, then you know what? Maybe you think outside the box a little bit. You know what I'm doing now, I've got into the weed control and fertilization and there's less competition in that. Now, it, the one, the competitors in it are very competitive and have a lot of money and market like crazy. So I mean, it's still competitive. But the, the sheer number of competitors is far less than it was uh, from a mowing standpoint. But you don't necessarily have to get into that. I mean, you, you can, but another thing you could do is, you know, I feel like if I was gonna start a mowing business, now I might start just, just doing whatever, you know, cutting grass weekly, bi-weekly, but I would, you know, personally, if I was in the market that called for it, like I'm in now, where there was enough people to desire this, I would probably push towards the 12 month contracts on the more higher end residentials. And so they're paying me year round and I'm coming to their property, you know, about 52 weeks a year. Now, maybe in the winter, and I know this maybe is more for the, in the south and up north, maybe you're doing snow and things like that, but I mean, you're cleaning up leaves through the fall and then it gets uh, in the winter and you're trimming hedges, you're putting out new pine straw mulch, you're keeping everything blowed off, you know, you're finding something to do because a lot of people just want it looking good year round. And to me, that's that steady income. And what I see is there's a lot of companies that are out there mowing during the summer, but there really aren't that many that are offering this full service year round to the higher end customers. And I'm talking about making it look good, everything, keeping the weeds out. You may have to, a lot of the mowing companies, you know, work with a weed control and fertilization company to, to handle that part of the deal. Or maybe you become an all-in-one solution where you, you know, do the weed control and the mowing. I know people that do it that way but they're able to be a, a kind of a complete solution for that customer and setting themselves apart. So is it a competitive industry? Yes. Why? Because it's a good industry and there's a lot of money to be made, but it's a growing industry. The industry overall is growing. Uh, if you're in a, a town that people are moving to, I'm in a town where it, it, the population is growing. They're building houses like crazy. There's always new customers coming. Maybe that's not where you are. Not all markets are the same. I understand that but you can differentiate yourself uh, and you can break into a crowded industry. I mean, I look at, I, I'm not in a very big town, okay? And the other day I was thinking, I counted up at least eight pizza restaurants in my town and there's more opening. You know, recently we've had others open and you would think, well, why, if we've got seven pizza restaurants, why is another pizza restaurant open? I mean, it's pizza, you know, but you know what happens? It opens, they do things slightly different, not quite like the other pizza place, and they're crowded, people ordering pizza, okay? Because there's a great demand for pizza. There's a great demand for lawn care services. It's crowded, but if you can differentiate yourself just a little bit, then there's a place for you. And once you get established, then it's just the barn doors are open, the thing's just blowing up on you. At that point, it becomes a whole lot more about how do I manage my business than how do I get new customers? Because the new customers will start flowing in. At least that's been my experience and not just for me, but what I observe in other people. Let me know, hear from you. I know, understand, like I said, all markets are not the same. Maybe this, you think, this is not how it is in my market, Jason. I'm, I'm having trouble getting five customers. You know, it, it's tough. Or maybe there is so many com competition that I can't, you know, break into it anyway. So, um, but let me hear from you. Your thoughts, your concerns, you agree, you disagree. It, maybe I can uh, answer a question for you or you put the question out there, somebody else might can answer it for you. So if you hadn't done so, subscribe to the channel. I'll continue to provide the helpful content. I want to also mention the, the Lawn Care Life Conference coming up uh, November 15th, 16th of 2018. And I've got a great lineup of speakers, about 10 speakers coming, myself, 
uh, Alan Hain, Lawn Care Nut, uh, Brian Shane, Top Notch Lawn Care, Brian Fulton, Brian's Lawn Maintenance, and a bunch of other people. Got some great sponsors. The presenting sponsors, Jobber. Got Spiker Spreaders are sponsoring. Harold's Fertilizer sponsoring. I've got a lot of things on tap to make this a great event. It's going to be video professionally. Got a, a professional comedian coming in. Going to be a top-notch event. Hope you can make it. Check out lawncarelife.com and you can click on the conference link for details and registration.